All right, so sparring class. What we're gonna work on today is last time we were working a lot on kind of getting the person to do what we want them to do, right? By faking or by throwing something several times and then faking it so that they give you a certain reaction and then you take advantage of that reaction, right? So today, what instead, what we're gonna be working on is we're gonna be working on things that are gonna help us in terms of a defensive manner and which is gonna help us in terms of uh, kind of just being a little bit more aggressive and not necessarily relying on what they do, but kind of blinding them and then striking, okay? Uh, blinding them is a harsh term, but you'll, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some cones out here. Uh, I can move these a bit closer actually. So here and here. So what I want you to do is I want you to start by just putting one leg in front, doesn't matter which leg it is, okay? One leg in front, hold on, yeah, there we go. For kata class, I have my pants up here. For sparring class, I have them down here. I need more range and more shape. Okay, so from here, I've got my feet a certain distance apart. I don't want my feet to be super wide like this because then I have no lateral movement. So I keep my feet about shoulder width apart. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back, we're gonna go forward, we're gonna go to the, to the front, then we're gonna go forward, then we're gonna go back, then we're gonna go uh, side, front, back, okay? Now, one thing that I want you to try to do is always keep your feet the same distance apart. So we're gonna go figure eight around the cone just to work on our footwork. But if you need to move to the right, you move to the right. All right, okay, so this is technically my front leg, right? So if you need to move forward, you move your front leg first. If you need to move back, you move your back leg first. If you need to move to the left, you move your left leg first. If you need to move to your right, move your right leg first. Doesn't matter if you have your left leg or your right leg in front. If you need to move to your left, move your left leg. If you need to move to your right, move your right leg. This prevents us from, if I need to move to my left and I move my right leg, how am I supposed to defend myself when my legs are crossed like this, right? At least from here, I can throw a quick kick or something like that, right? So, let's be, let's bounce, right? So we're working on gravity and cataclast today. Down, down, down. Not jump, jump, jump. You're going down, 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 okay? So what I want you to do is just follow my lead, okay? If you have something to go around, like two rolls of toilet paper, or if you have cones at home, use them, okay? So, let's go forward, side, forward, side, back, side, back, side, forward, side, forward, side, back, side, back, side, forward, Side, forward, side, back, side, back, side. So notice how I'm trying to avoid bringing my legs together. Because as soon as you bring your legs together, you can't go anywhere, right? So maintaining the same distance between your feet, like I would rather extend a little bit and then catch up than go like this or especially like this, and then be uh, helpless, okay? So if I need to move in that direction, I'm moving this leg, and then instantly closing whatever gap I just opened, right? So keep your feet the same. Now, instead of doing it in like, in like one, two, three, instead of doing it in robotic figures, we're just gonna go figure eight, okay? We're gonna go for 30 seconds, and we're just gonna go figure eight around the cones. Okay, so or around the toilet paper or whatever. So you're gonna go, so just you can do small steps. But I'm just keeping in mind the principles, right? So if I need to move this way, I move this leg. If I need to move this way, I move this leg. If I need to move back, I move this leg. If I need to move forward, I move this leg, right? So never putting your feet together or crossing your feet. Okay, 30 seconds, ready? And I don't really have a stopwatch, so I'll just go.
Hands are always up, of course. Time. Nice. Okay, guys. Just give me one sec here. For some reason, the connection's slowing down. Okay. I don't think it's terrible. Okay. Next. What I want you to do is I want you to create uh, a line somehow. Whether you put your belt on the floor or earlier in the little dragons class, I, I unrolled all this toilet paper accidentally. Okay, so I want you to make a line on the floor somehow. Like that. And I'll break that off. Okay. So it looks kind of like a finish line. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to go up the finish line and then back down the finish line. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work on putting our foot forward, putting our foot back, forward, back, forward, back, just like that, okay? And I want you to think of yourself kind of like a DJ. Ever, 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 okay? So you have one hand on your, on your headphones because you're listening to the sick beats you're dropping, right? All the sick bangers or whatever they say nowadays, okay? So you're listening to the sweet sounds and then the other one's spinning the disc, okay? But what's really happening is you're not a DJ, you're a smart fighter. You're protecting your head and you're measuring how far they are with your front hand. Okay, so here, so you're going forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, just like that, forward, back, forward, back. See that, it's toilet paper and cones, guys. Toilet paper and two rocks, I don't care. Okay, so you're gonna go forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. All you're doing is you're just measuring. If they can touch your glove, then you better go or you better get the heck out of there. Okay, so 30 seconds again, forward, back. Forward back, okay? Ready? And go. Sometimes you may have to block something. Nice work, guys. Okay, good. So, distance control and footwork. That is how you're going to avoid getting scored on, and that's how you're going to line up a perfect attack. Okay, distance control and footwork. That's it. Okay, now, what I wanna work on, because now we're gonna work on something that's, something that's a little bit more subjective. Whereas this stuff, is objective, so if you manage your distance well and they don't hit you, then that's objective. If they don't hit you, then they, you, they can't score a point if they literally don't touch you, right? So that's why footwork and good distance control will help show all of the judges that they have, they have no chance of scoring on you. However, when I'm facing my, my opponent here, and I do score, if you leave your hand out, then that's a subjective thing. Some judges might say, uh, he hit him by accident, it wasn't a real punch, I'm not gonna give it to them. So for example, from here, if I throw a reverse punch, boom, and then I leave it out there, some judges might go, no, that's not a real point, okay? So what I want you to do is whether you have a training partner or not, okay? So whether you're staying with the toilet paper line here, and then you're going, Okay, see what I did with my backhand? I pulled it all the way back. Again, this is something that's subjective. Some judges might score like this, right, where you leave it out there. Personally, I think it's smart to bring it back because what if you need to throw a second punch? Then it's already back at the belt, whereas if you leave it out, now you can't really flick it up like that, right? So these are objective, uh, subjective things, right? Personally, I think it's smarter to pull it back because then you hear it, the whip crack. Okay, so from here, make sure you get your face blocked up, and then you're gonna get underneath. And see how my hand comes back to my belt. So I'm in my guard here, right? I'm 
in my guard. My hand comes back to my belt. Okay, and my hand comes back to my belt. So if you want to just show distance here, right? So from here, my foot starts at one cone, and I end at the other cone. Then you can switch legs if you want. It's good to get better on one side than the other, though. All right, here. All right, you got to bring your hand back. Okay, so let's do 30 seconds of reverse punch, back, then turn. Reverse punch, back. Get that face block under, uh, get under your face block. Don't go like this. Because from here, you can get knocked into it, right? From here, right, I'm literally underneath it. Okay, ready? And go. And it comes back to the waist. Nice work, guys. Okay, good. So that's reverse punch and then pulling it back to your belt. Okay, now let's work on distracting, okay? So if you're someone who loves to use your hands, right, so you like to get their kick, you like to get them to kick so that that, that way their kicks are out of the way, that way you can follow up then this is a great one for you. Another thing is uh, kind of jamming the kicker, overwhelming them with one thing, and then coming underneath with the other thing, okay? So one thing that I, that I like to do when I'm sparring from here is kind of get them to get their kick out. If that's not working, then I'm gonna go like this, right? I didn't actually do anything. All I did was punch the air. But then they don't, they're like, what the heck is that? And then I blitz, okay? So I'm out here, right? Because this will get their eyes looking over there momentarily, right? This, boom, will get their eyes looking over there, and then by the time I'm blitzing, it's already too late, whether they're prepared with a kick or whatever. But again, you don't want to do this right off the bat. You want to experiment. What if I go like this? What if I go like this? If their, if their reaction to this is a step back side kick, don't blitz right away, because you're going to boom, run right into a kick, right? So maybe go like this, if you realize that they're doing a step back side kick, do this, and then as soon as they're done with step back side kick, right, then you blitz them after, right? Because from here, if my reaction was this, boom, and then I don't hit anything, then all I'm doing is just shelling up on the defense, bah, bah, and you're able to come through, okay? So that's... That's kind of distracting them. Okay, so there's one thing that you can do. Another thing that we were working on before was fake to draw their kick out, avoid the kick, and then get underneath. Okay, so either fake or fake, and then get underneath. Hey, okay, don't forget to pull that arm back. Okay, what's the next one? Oh yes, blinding them. So that's distracting them. So you fake one thing and do the other thing. Now, if you're more of an aggressive fighter and you just like to just blitz all the time, then sometimes like faking and waiting and stuff like that, you may not be great at timing. That's fine, okay? So all you're gonna do is you have no intention of throwing a backer. So maybe you throw a couple blitzes, okay? Then after, you have no intention of throwing a backer, you're just going to throw that hand up there and come under with the reverse punch. So you're just going to blind them. Okay, and notice how I always pull my hand back. Right, but I'm just from here, I'm just going to blind. Right, so it kind of acts like a face block, 
but I have no intention of even throwing a baptism. All I'm trying to get them to do is just go, ah! And even, even if they're planning on throwing a reverse punch, my intention was there first. So if, if their reaction, as soon as they see my hand coming up, is to go like this, boom, I've already hit them, right? Because this, they're coming at the same time. I'm just putting my palm right in their face. I'm going, smell my glove, right? So even if their reaction is this, then they've already given you the opening, you've already hit them, and they can hit you second, who cares? Because it's point sparring, you score the point, you hit first, you score the point. Okay, so let's try that blinding technique. So hand goes forward, and then you go underneath. Okay, ready, go. Right, so you just throw the hand forward. Blind and punch. Nice work. Okay, those are all the drills that I have for today. So I'm going to take a little break before bow class, but I want you guys to, when I post this one, watch it over and over and over again. Practice these drills, and then when we get back to the dojo, we'll put the pads on and we'll put these drills into action. Okay, I know everyone will be anxious to get back into the routine, get back into the swing of things. So thank you very much for logging in, Taznim. Hey, Omar, your belt's not for whipping. Your belt's to hold your pants up. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya. Miss you guys.